What's up guys, it's Shrek and this is the inverted scales. I'm gonna be honest with you, this is a very confusing package for me. Showed up out of the blue. I've had a public mailing address for almost as long as I've had the channel and sometimes companies just send things to it. I think because this is an Australian product from Chinese manufacturer that there's like a little ambiguity and probably communications breakdown here. This also showed up like right in the middle of some transitional stuff at the company, but it's been sitting on the desk. It's an interesting piece. We finally got it assembled and powered up and I wanna share it with you guys. I also wanna point out, I think it's an incredibly dangerous product. I get a little bit of like fuddy-duddy comments every time I mention that, but like this is clearly not for public use play. This would be private field only, and I'm not convinced which tournaments rule sets would allow you to use something like this because it's a stored energy blaster that's hitting significantly harder than your average flywheel. Now, when I say that, I mean like it's got some serious power in it, some serious potential. From my research online, it's also got a pretty serious price tag. So one of these will set you back about 400 AUD. I found one selling for 320 USD. That's actually not as favorable a conversion, but it changes by the day. I'm not 100% convinced as to which kind I have. It's a combination of injection molded and 3D printed parts and then over here you've got machined metal parts with like a blasted finish on them. So I believe that this setup here uh, which is all metal is the 2.0. You would effectively replace the front end of the blaster with that. It's you know a mag well effectively. It takes mag, not this mag, it takes magazines and then it has a low profile drop. This has more of a paddle set up. There's a lot of fascinating things going on here, but I guess just to start off very military inspired, the OD green black combo doesn't give it away, takes a 3S LiPo here in the back, has cabling coming out, and then you'll note uh, ships by default with an XT30 connector. So in my case, this is the smallest XT30 I have. Plug it in and it'll make a noise. And then I can't actually fit this battery and the cabling comfortably in the stock and then close the door. Now this stock has a, note. this is not a battery it came with, but it has this 3D printed door. Print quality is exceptionally low, which is interesting because the injection molding quality is medium, not quite production blaster, but not quite like worker levels. And then the inject, the, the blasted tooled metal parts are exceptional, very, very high quality. In fact, such a high quality, that if you went this route and you built it this way, it has threaded barrels, uh, which are threaded the same way that they could take worker, prophecy, seagull, uh, harrier, et cetera, barrels. But we're not gonna fool with the 2.0. I'm gonna keep it in its OD green kind of injection molded aesthetic and just sort of talk through it. So a few interesting things. It's firing from a closed bolt position. That would be the firearms term, but it fires before it cycles, which means when you load a fresh magazine in, you actually have to chamber a dart before it'll fire. And then interestingly enough, you chamber over this return spring, which is somewhat beefy inside the bolt system. Just fascinating. It uses, or it ships, with unicorn mags, where again, the mag lips have to slip over that spring on the bolt, just wild. And then uh, it also, of course, takes talons. Magazine release here, but you've always got, the magazine release is almost redundant. It fits in pretty comfortably. And then this, uh, this bolt does not let anything go clean and easy. This keeps falling out, it would drive me crazy. I guess if I was gonna use this in a war next weekend, I would tape this on. Now, again, this showed up in like 20 different pieces. It took us a while to assemble it without proper instructions, but clearly there's some sort of M4 stock. You can adapt that on with this plate, but we couldn't figure out how to do that and then also store the battery. So we left this in. Lots of extra hardware and some rods. Given that the injection molded blaster is held together, there's a tremendous amount of force in the reloading and priming sequence. So it's got these bars that run through it and then are cinched mechanically on both sides in these divots to kind of hold the blaster together. But we are loaded right now. Again, the first one should not fire close bolt means that just loaded the blaster. Now, in terms of firing it, it is firing. There is a switch, not a pretty clean switch over here. I mean, this is a real Radio Shack toggle switch extruding from the side of the blaster. If this ever got caught on something, I don't really know what you'd do. Forward seems to be semi-auto, that's one shot and then nothing. There's two more settings. It beeps every time to give you a little bit of feedback there. I can only assume that setting two is burst fire. Let's go ahead and plug the quick magazine in. Burst is three shots, and then that would mean that, uh, that all the way is boogaloo, right? I pushed it the wrong way. Forward semi, forward semi, middle burst, back boogaloo. 
to destroy my light box, but it's shooting so hard that I don't really want to shoot the drywall in here. Can I hit this rod? No. Dang. Here, this is a full Arizona tea. So, you know, I mean, not a lightweight thing to be firing at and definitely imparting some amount of energy on it. Let's take it outside and safely put it over the chronograph. All right, so we came outside for some natural light for the chronograph. A lot of comments about the new filming setup, and I agree. It's hard to mess with the white balance in there, but with the blank background, we're, we're working on it. We're gonna find a temporary solution until we can make a more permanent one. Well, let's set it to semi. I did go ahead and slap a scar barrel on this just to dial it in make it a little more consistent. Jinx is running around. Maybe she'll say hey in the video, but let's put a couple over. Obviously that's loading. 243, 29, 28, 25, duplicate, 229, 241, 246. I mean, overall, that's a that's a pretty spicy meatball. Whole lot of nothing out there. Let's get kind of a range estimate from a shouldered position. Sheesh. This thing is hot. It is hot. Should it be legal in competition play? I have no idea. What does full auto look like? Let's find out. Do a hot swap here. All right, Jinx, they're going over your head, girl, okay? So, you know, controlled fire. It's a pretty serious blaster. Uh, if you categorize it as a Springer, I think it's a serious contender. The recoil is actually quite manageable. You guys will note, I did manage just barely to squeeze this battery in there. I mean, overall, very compact. I don't even think you necessarily need an optic because you can fire it kind of NIC style from a shoulder position there rapidly and comfortably. Plus you get the accuracy through volume that you would from a stored energy blaster. Is this the direction I wanna see the hobby go? Not necessarily, it's very Mill, Milsim inspired, et cetera, and so forth. And, and this is a rough early version of whatever this is gonna look like. I mean, clearly we're using Radio Shack hardware. We don't have a definitive setup in the back area here. We're not sure if we're doing this front with the barrel and its shroud or if we're doing the grease gun-esque 2.0. I mean, it's all very up in the air, but as far as the platform goes, I mean, it's delivering power consistently into a closed bolt system that, I mean, 238, high rate of fire. Pretty, pretty tough to argue with that in terms of performance. It's compact, it's not terribly heavy like some of these AEGs have been in the past. It's pretty slick. Good luck flying with it though. That's just my hot take on it. Again, some of my information might be a little iffy. I'll link you to where I think you can find it in the description box down below, but showed up out of the blue. Definitely a fascinating piece of foam flinging hardware. Would love you guys' comments down in the comment section below because I'm figuring it out myself, trying to decide how I feel about it. Of note, there is no safe, just to be clear. It's always, always ready to go. Just a, just a fascinating way to design the product. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Would you run this in a tournament? Would you run it at your locals? Would you run it at all? I don't know. Much love, blast on, drag out.